Looking for love, dating, updating your life is almost like searching for your keys. It's always in the last place that you left it. And that's why you need a girly like me to help you find it. Level up with Joshia, the podcast. Hey, girlies. Welcome back to another episode on the Level Up with Joshia podcast with your girl, Joshia. Girlies, how y'all doing today? I'm doing good, but how are you doing today? I wish we had like an interactive platform where we could do check-ins with each other. Y'all know I always open to having conversations with you all and to the girlies that still find ways to communicate with me like just thank you thank you so much like i appreciate that if you're listening to the podcast on apple music apple podcast well apple podcast is i don't think it in like spotify but you can listen to music on podcast so if you're listening on apple podcast or spotify or from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and definitely leave comments and rate the podcast because it helps push the podcast in front of the girlies that truly need it. And it's always my mission to reach to reach as much girlies as possible. Girlies, we are in that series where we are restarting life because I know many of you, the first and the second beginning of the second one has been extremely rough. And I know that because it's been rough for me. I have been transitioning like so much that every month is something new, girl. Girl, everyone is something. It's always something, all right? That's how it's been. However, for the girlies that truly want to change this year because I want to be on, I'm, I'm okay being uncomfortable if it helps me reach the overall goal and as we continue this half mark series in regards to starting your life over and getting serious about your life because i want all of you to not only level up in your relationships but to level up for yourself first because what i realize is that as a woman once you start to exude that level up blessings and better men are going to come to you and what is so great about this particular era that you are in is that God protects you during this time. And I'm going to share two stories before we get into today's episode on ways we're going to re-script our life. This is what we're going to do to start life over. So this episode is really going to require a pen and a paper. That's if you're serious for life, because if you ain't, then child in 2025, January 2025, you're going to see how much of us have, have actually changed our lives for the better. So, first story is that a young lady would have emailed me and she was telling me how, you know, she was stuck between a guy that was good to her and a guy that that was not good for her. But the chemistry was there. And I shared our experience with her where I wasn't dating anybody else, but I was with, with somebody that was not good for me. And I was there based on chemistry. I wasn't there based on nothing else. And as I took a step back, from that particular relationship or that dynamic, I realized that it was just toxic dick syndrome, one. And two, I was afraid to lose what was already invested, okay? Time, pump, pump, energy, all of that. You don't want to walk away from it. And I realized that when I decided to take a step back and look at the relationship, I realized that the chemistry wore off very quickly where I saw the person for what they were. And girlies, excuse me, a lot of you in this level up journey are in those dynamics where you feel as if that I cannot leave this guy or I cannot leave this job or I can't leave this situation because I have already invested time. And this is what I want you to really consider. You've already wasted a few years or a few months or a few weeks. What is the sense of wasting a few more? Are you going to look back at your life 10 years from now and be upset that you would have stayed when you could have leave at that five-year mark, that two-year mark, that three-year mark, that one-year mark, that one-month mark? And one of the conversations that I had with myself with that particular toxic dynamic was, I've already wasted a year and a half am I going to waste another year and a half? Because it's not going to change. And you have to stop looking at what you have already missed and start looking for ahead for what is to come. 
if you really sit down with yourself and you ask yourself, will this get better in time? Most of the time is not. I left a five year relationship because I couldn't get a ring. And guess what? Two years after leaving that, I still didn't get the ring from him. He didn't magically wake up one day and say, I'm going to marry you after I left. I still didn't get it. So therefore, that showed me even if I had to stay another two or five years, I still wouldn't have gotten the ring. So you have to ask yourself these questions. Another thing is, is when you're in this level of journey and you're really serious about it, God protects you. And sometimes it's not in the ways that make you feel good about yourself. You feel as if that you're missing out on something again. So there was this particular um, dating dynamic where this person checked off a lot of uh, check marks in the boxes for what I wanted in a potential partner. But they made a big mistake. And it wasn't a mistake that would have affected me in a way where it was like, oh, it was aggressive or it was very insulting. It was disrespectful nonetheless, but this person did a major red flag. And I literally said to myself, oh, wow. God showed me this really fast because the person kind of went ghost, right? They literally went ghost for one day when there was plans already made. And then I had to say to myself, like, guess what? This is a big friggin' red flag. And even though this person checked off numerous boxes that what I was looking for, I have to understand that one, you cannot ignore the red flags. And two, God is protecting you early on. So are you going to keep trying to fit the other boxes? Or are you going to move on? And when you're in a level of journey, one of the things that protects you along with God is knowing what it is that you want to do. And that's what I want to be teaching you in this episode. So when counterfeits come around or when things come around that is almost there but not completely there, you are not confused. You are not, you're not hesitating to walk away. The more that I, I choose to say no, the more that I choose to, to redeem myself, the more that I choose to walk away, the better I become at it. So for that particular dynamic, when that person went goes for that 24 hours and they came back the next day, like we didn't have plans the day before, I didn't answer back because child, that won't call over. That won't call over. And I don't think I would have done that a few years ago. I don't even think I would have done that a year ago because I dealt with a situation where somebody was going goes on and off and I used the excuse of long distance where they was in the same country as me as an excuse, but I should have not done. So when you are in this level of journey, you're going to lose a lot of things and you're going to have to say no to the things that don't align with what you're going to put on the pen, what you're going to put on the piece of paper today or in your book. So let's get into today's episode. That was my story time for y'all. Okay. <laughs> so how are we going to rescript our life? So we're going to break it down into three categories, girlies, that we're going to focus on because there's literally, I think, two more months left in the second quarter and we're at the half month mark okay i don't want you to get overwhelmed so we're going to break it down into three categories and those three categories are going to be financials relationships and health so those are the three main categories and the reason that i simplified it like that it is because we don't want to get overwhelmed i think sometimes we bite off more than we can chew and because we're biting off what more than what we can chew what tends to happen to us is that we become overwhelmed and don't want to work towards it this is what i am doing if y'all don't want to do it then that's your business but this is what works for me and this is what has made me look forward to better to come okay so now that we've broken it down into three main categories let's look at our financial status one of the things I want you to do when you are restarting your life, girlies, is be honest with yourself. Do not lie. Do not friggin' lie. Let me sip a Guinness today. Because y'all know I was drinking this. I was drinking this on champagne. Guinness, champagne, or vodka, and tonic, it all depends, right? Okay. Number one, what income you want to make. I want you to put what you want to make in the next year, the next five years, and the next ten years. What do you truly want to make? Although that I make a good salary where I am, 
I still have a dream salary that I want to make. What income you want to make. Number two, what status you would like to acquire in your working life. Whether this be an entrepreneur, whether you are a corporate girly, whether you are a college graduate, whether you were just finishing high school. Ask yourself, what is the highest level you want to acquire? So let's say, for example, you work in a hotel. Do you, is the highest position you want to acquire as a manager? Is it a director? Is it a regional manager? It is a general manager. What it is that you want to do? Because see, what's going to happen is that when you write down the income you want to make, by having a practical ladder that you can see to work your way up, you will always know where you're going. Okay, number three, where are you working? Ask yourself, girlies, truly and honestly, do you like what you're doing now? Do you truly like what you're doing now? And it's okay if you don't. So what happens is when you realize that you don't like what you're doing now, you're going to have to start the work to get an exit. Okay, this is this is the real reality. And you're going to have to start applying to the jobs that you truly want to do. That's going to align in the title, the highest title you want to acquire. So for me, I went through an experience these past few weeks where I was getting job offers and I declined most of them and all of them, actually. And the reason that I did that is because at this big age, I am no longer leaving things just for leaving sake. But I'm now leaving things because I need it to align with the overall goal. So if it's not making me any more, more money or if it isn't less demanding with more money or it isn't aligned with my purpose, I don't need to do it. I am now entering that stage of my life where kids and marriage will, prob- it will probably be the next step. Therefore, I don't need a job that's going to consume me, especially if it ain't giving me more money. So those are the things that I have to look at. So these are the things that you have to look at. Do you like where you are working and where is your dream job? Because you can get it. Keep applying to the places that keep rejecting you. Keep applying. Even if you get your foot in the door and it's not the position that you want, you're going to work so hard that you're going to get out of that particular position to get into the one that you want to go. Okay? Number four, if you are not the one that aspires to be in the job, but you're using the job now for something, but you don't know what it is, think about a business that you would like to start. So for me, I realized that my my nine to five funds whatever it is that I want to do. So I have to be using my finances responsibly. So if it's a business and a passion that you want to do, I'm not saying go and leave your nine to five because starting a business is not the easiest thing to do. But you're going to have to start now budgeting for that business and lifestyle that you want to create. That means there's going to be a lot of delayed gratification. That means it's going to be a lot of trips that you cannot take the talum on the swing. Okay? The swing is getting ready to break now. There's going to be a lot of times you cannot be on the raft in Jamaica. There's going to be times that you cannot go Dubai. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot of times that you can't do that. It is because you now, at the age that you are uh, that you are currently at, you have to really focus and align with yourself. Because let me tell you, life tends to move very quickly after 25. I remember when I was 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Honestly and truly, life is moving very slow for me. But baby, after 25... I wake up this morning, I'll be like, girl, you're 27, okay? And then the last thing I want you to do is how would you like to look and show up in this career or work? Now, the reason that I want you all to to answer that question, because although it sounds shallow, you will start to realize the mindset that you would have and how you would appear to the world when you start to embody what it is that you want to look like. So for me personally, right, I remember when there was a time in my life I would shop just because an item is on sale, but it necessarily wouldn't align with my style. Now I actually buy things that I think align with my style. And this is something that I want y'all to do too. Okay, so these are going to be, I think it was five ways that we're going to get our finances together. Remember, I tell you, we need a piece of paper for this episode or a book or a journal. Now, let's move on to number two, relationships. Let me tell you, there are women out there without degrees because of a man. 
There are women that are homeless because of men. There are women that are not further in life because of friends. There are women that simmer down themselves because of family. Relationships determine. I want you to be. I want you all to remember this, and if you all don't remember nothing else, I say. The second greatest decision you will make in your life as a woman. This is the second. The first one is giving your life to Christ. But the second thing is, who the hell you decide to go through life with? They will either progress you, they will propel you, or they will regress you. And I want you to know that. The partner that you choose determines how fast you move in life. And let me tell you something. The partner that I had, was not somebody that helped me progress in life. I progressed in life out of pain, not because I had a partner that pushed me to do better. So I set myself back. I have had a relationship where I invested in that person and it set me back financially. So I regress rather than progress. And this is why I can tell you relationships plays a very significant role about what you need to be in their level of error at the, at, in, in the second half of this year. So, number one, the type of man you want to attract. You have to write it down. Baby girl, if you don't write it down, when you go on these dates with men, you ain't going to know what you're looking for. When you start to speak to them, you don't know what you're listening for. I was talking to somebody on a date, and and the person said, I've been divorced, and I don't think I'll ever remarry again. I'll remarry when I'm 80. Off of the back, I already know. Red flag, me and you don't align in that way. So now I understand that because you have lived your life and it didn't pa- it didn't pan out for how you wanted to go, you think you can you can keep me as the common law? No sir. No sir. So you need to be listening for what people say. Now guess what? Had I not already had a prerequisite list in my mind, or I didn't have this prerequisite of, of what I wanted my husband, I would have missed that. That would have fly over my head. A lot of us get caught up in our antics and we get caught up in our ambience of the day, but we are not listening to the man. When you are, when you are going to that place in your life, whereas you truly want a date and you want a date tomorrow and you want a date for stability, you're going to have to become strategic. So I want you to now write down what the hell it is that you're looking for in a partner. And let me tell you something, this is going to help you keep your, your pussy in the freezer. And this is also going to help you keep your pants up and this is also going to help you say no to things that do not align with what you want the reason a lot of women are failing at relationships is because we never ask god for what we wanted in the mind we never sat down and truly look at what i'm looking for so it's like playing a game without the rules you will always lose it's like going to a test and not having the answers how you want God bring you a husband, but you ain't even sit down with God or sit down with yourself and say, this is what I'm looking for. That's the only way you can be able to comb through these dusties on this road. Number two, you need to figure out the types of friends you want to be around. And let me tell you something. There are going to be friends that enhance the experience of life. And then there are going to be friends that are just a burden to your life. There are going to be people that you have to cut off in order to move forward. If you want high quality experiences, you need to be around high quality people. Friends, I have had many, many, many stories about friends. And one of the things that I have learned is not to feel bad when they came, those friendships came to an end. Because there's a certain level I wanted to acquire in my life and a certain experience. You have to figure out the type of people you want to be around. Just because somebody and you have history, don't mean that history has to continue. Okay? Number three, when it comes to your relationships, you need to figure out the lessons you would like to share with others. And when I say the lessons you like to share with others, as you become an evolved person, you should be able to just be able to express the wisdom that you would have learned. So for me personally, 
if I have immature or small-minded friends, they would not understand when I speak about these type of things. They wouldn't understand when I go through those times where I need to just vent about a relationship that may have not worked out or a dating experience that didn't work out and don't have the level of maturity to give me sound advice. Uh, rather than uh, rather than quoting a lyric from a sexy red song saying, F my baby daddy, even though I ain't got none. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to figure out what lessons you want to teach others and what and what type of advice you want to get from others, okay? Number four, how would you like to show your love to others? So this is how you want to show up. And I think a lot of times we want good friends, but we are not good friends. And one of the things I pride myself on now because... I never really truly invested into friendships, but now I understand how important they are, especially when you are in a single season and don't have no man, is that I want to always show up to my friend in a way that I can help them go through experiences together. And one of those things that would help me do that is that my finances have to be together. So I always want to be that friend that if my friend is feeling depressed, I want to be the friend that shows up and they want to take a 48-hour trip to Miami that I I am financially ready and stable to take the 48-hour trip to Miami. I want to be that friend that when they're not having a good a good week or a good month that we can go to an Atlanta to Atlantis or Bahama or somewhere and book a staycation. Meaning that I'm going to have to show up for myself financially to be stable enough to do those random experiences. So that's how I always, I always wanted to be the friend that will give you an adventure and experience even when you feel down, bitch. Like I got you, right? (laughs) That's how I want to show up. So figure out how you want to show your love to others. And then last but not least, what characteristic does your ideal person have? So this all goes back down to your what you want in a partner. You have certain characteristics that you need to find. So for example, for me, one of the characteristics that I would need from a person that I will truly be in love with and spend the rest of my life with is that person has to be a good listener. That person not only has to be a good listener, but that person has to be a person that can give feedback. And, and I pride myself on that communication. So communication is something really big. So I need a big person that's communicate like a big communicator that likes to talk and likes to listen. So that is a characteristic that I want. And I not only want that in a partner, but I also want that in friends. Okay? Now moving on to last but not least, which is your health. And now we're going to get very serious because many of you are big back, big back. And let me tell you something. Do not allow society to make body positivity a reason for you to stay unhealthy. All of us have different body types, but it's a difference when you just, when you just a big wounded person. And then there's a difference where you just want to eat with your big back. That's it. For me, I am a woman that's, I would be considered an endomorph, right? It's different types of body shapes, right? I think one is a mesomorph, endomorph, and I can't remember the next one. But there's the way that my body is shaped. I I will always look more fuller on the on the bottom part rather than on the upper part. So I know I would never have a particular body type because how I am shaped. So the best thing I can do, even if I'm slim, most of my weight is still gonna carry on the bottom half of my body. However, I'm gonna remain healthy. So I want you to say this. What are your health goals in the next six months to a year? How many pounds you want to lose? How do you want to change your diet? How many times you want to exercise? What is your body goal? And when you're looking at body goals, because it's a thin line between love and hate and insanity, okay? Pick people that look just like you. Pick people that look just like you without surgery, okay? Pick realistic people. Do not go and pick people that have a surgery body and do not pick people that don't have your body type. Okay? Figure out what are your health goals for the next six months to a year. The second thing you're going to do is what is your ideal body type? This is where you're looking to see what is your body goals based on somebody having similar features in their body to your type. In the overweight stage and in the healthy stage, guys. Okay? Number three. Health habits you would like to start. This goes down to, like I said, 
How would you, how many times a week you want to exercise? What days are you going to be meal prepping your food? When is going to be your cheat day? What are you going to cut out completely for a while? How am I going? What, how many hours of sleep I'm going to do? When am I going to go to bed? All of these things. Let me tell you something. Someone was trying to call me just now. All of these things truly model. All of these things model. Because the reason that it truly matters is because micro habits turn into, I wouldn't say a routine, right? So habits turn into a routine. Micro habits turn into routines. So then you will find out that you're not just meal prepping the meal prep. You'll realize that this is a lifestyle. That's what's going to happen. You're going to turn it into a lifestyle. The fourth thing you're going to do is what are you eating to stay fit? You can't be eating the rice and cabbage every week if you're trying to stay fit. What are you going to cut out? When I first started my health journey, I cut out soda. Very rarely you'll see me drink a soda. I cut out soda. I cut out juices. I was just drinking like water and coconut water. And eventually it became a lifestyle. It, it became a lifestyle. When I want a soda, I drink club soda or tonic water. Because most of the times I'm only looking for the acid. That little bubbly feeling, I'm not looking for the flavor. So you need to figure out what are you eating to stay fit. And last but not least, how does your new body feel? How do you feel like you're going to show up? How are you going to dress this new body that you have? How are you going to experience life with this new body? What, what places are you going to go to show off this new body? What vacation are you going to book when you get this new body? The re- you have to start visualizing the life that you want even before you have it. Because on those days that you don't want to do life, the way you need to, it's going to be the goal in mind. And it's going to be the, the insight of seeing what you can be in the future. So these are the ways that we are going to restart our life, girlies. And, and the reason that I want you all to really, really, really take time to do this is because I want you to be the best that you can be. And I'm going to be the best for you always. But I want you to be the best that you can be. And then guess what? On a day that you are by yourself, answer these questions and look at it every single day to keep you on track. One of the things that I'm doing this year is that I want to love me. I ain't looking for no relationship even if I go on a date. Like this year is just for me. So that requires me to be disciplined. In involving and in love and in loving my life so much that I don't feel like I need somebody right now to make me enjoy that. One of the things I'm also doing for myself this year is getting my finances in a place I don't have to think about money. So that requires a lot of sacrifices this year. Another thing that I want to focus on is becoming so mentally good at what I want in my husband that I walk around with it in my mind that I can feel and exude the energy from a man that's not right for me that I'm able to get away from a table that I don't want to be at very early on that's what I want for me so as you restart your life girlies I want you all to know this you can get up at any point at any day and decide to live a better life. It's going to be scary and it's going to be hard. There are going to be times you want to go back to what you know. But if you keep going back to what you know, it's going to cost what you could have. The people that you see rich enjoying their lives, consistency played a major role I want you to consistently show up for yourself, girlies. And this is an opportunity to restart your life. June 1st is coming. 
June 1st, I want you to wake up and say it begins. And you keep working at it every single day. Thank you for coming to another episode on the Level Up with Joshia podcast. And I will see you next week, girlies. Bye.